Foodopoly book group. My name is Kristen. I'm Abby. I'm Julia. I'm Lauren. Luke. I'm Don. The Dark Side of Chocolate was made in order to investigate and expose any truths about the claims of childhood slavery and the chocolate industry in order to bring awareness to and provoke action from the major chocolate manufacturers. The film involves undercover investigations that take place in Mali, West Africa and the Ivory Coast, which is the world's largest cocoa producer. Although the information in the video was very well presented, we believe that there were some aspects which lessened the impact of the information presented and had us question the reliability of the source. One example is that child labor is probably not the only problem in the chocolate industry, although it was the only problem represented to us here. On top of that, we as Americans get a lot of our goods imported from places like Taiwan, Peru, and Mexico. It's likely that child labor is probably used there as well, and we're not presented with any of that information. That being said, it really makes the impact of this information less effective on the message that the video is trying to spread. Journalists did a pretty good job. Uh, conducting that investigation, but I felt like most of the evidence that he provided was just given word of mouth. It wasn't very like factual on paper evidence. I felt like there needed to be more statistical evidence. Um, I know there were some people earlier on in the film that had statistical evidence of the number of trafficked children. Um, for example, that one guy talked about his records from 2006 and 2007 and 97 boys and 35 girls being rescued, and then the next year, 99 boys and 41 girls being rescued. Um, and also later on in the film, in the uh, BIA investigation, uh, there was some statistical evidence on that. Um, but I felt like there needed to be more of that. And also, I didn't like how he interviewed Safco Cal and big companies like that. Um, just because obviously they were just going to deny all the you know accusations of trafficking and say that they didn't use any child labor in their operations and i felt like the most convincing part of the film was when they went undercover on the uh cocoa plantation uh and asked the uh plantation manager how they could get labor and he said that his brother uh could transport you know, kids across the border, and he told them how much money it was. It was like 230 euros or something, I believe, like that. But I just felt like there needed to be more uh, factual, statistical, on-paper evidence. That it left an open ending with a lot to be desired. It didn't tell us what we could do to help or if the industry is doing anything to correct its mistakes. So we as viewers were left confused. Something else we must take into account while looking at this film is the difference between child labor ethics between America and Africa. Third world agrarian societies encourage children working on the farm to provide for their families. In the film, we saw that the woman wouldn't welcome home her child because she didn't have any money. Looking at this from an American point of view, we can think that that's really wrong and inhumane. But we must take into account the cultural differences. Um, the problem at hand is not the fact that kids are working on the farms in unfavorable conditions. The question at hand is, have American uh, markets for chocolate uh, forced Africans into child trafficking in order to meet our needs? Some solutions to ending child labor in the chocolate industry would be to invest in other ways to harvest the cocoa beans. This could include the companies like Mars investing in advanced equipment to limit the need for child labor in places like the Ivory Coast.